in my role doing education and outreach for Airbus, I spend a great deal of my time on the road coming to customers, going to customers, and providing educational presentations about human behavior in and out of the cockpit. So it, 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 it is for both technicians and pilots. It is in fact for anyone in the aviation community to better understand how our behavior is impacted by outside influences and how we can apply barriers to improve safety. Some innovations which are new and evolving, ever evolving, first I would say is FLI. It stands for First Limit Indicator. It's a way that the helicopter presents to the pilot one single limit. In, it's a combination of N1, torque, T4, but we only present to the pilot one single gauge needle and that's a representative of the first limit. Now, this technology has been around with Airbus for approximately 20 years. However, it's ever evolving. So when it was first presented to the customer, it would only announce to you if you exceeded a limit, if you were exceeding a limit. Today, in fact, it's predictive. So if I apply power too quickly or very, very brusquely, and I'm going to reach a limit, I'm not to the limit, but I'm reaching it quickly, it will sound an alarm to, to, to tell me that I'm, I'm perhaps a little bit uh, sporty with my flight control inputs. Additionally, the first limit indicator was initially a separate indication in a separate screen in the helicopter. Today, we've embedded the first limit indicator into the primary flight display so that the pilot can maintain their focus in a single display as opposed to having to look across the cockpit to determine their first limit. Another technological breakthrough has been synthetic vision. We now have the ability to present to the pilot in displays, a single display or multiple displays, the environment around the aircraft to provide the pilot with great situational awareness. This technology again is ever evolving but it's fantastic and it, and it provides us with a great sense of situational awareness. Automatic flight control systems, autopilots. Autopilots have been around in our business for perhaps 30 years, but the original autopilots and helicopters were very crude and quite honestly, they were designed for fixed wing aircraft and they were adapted for use in a helicopter. Today at Airbus, the, the autopilots that we install, the automatic flight control systems are tailor-made not only the hardware but the software for the particular aircraft. The fidelity of these autopilots is fantastic. That technology now allows the pilot to focus on being captain of the helicopter, not physically flying the machine, but being the master of the helicopter through technology, through automation. And this has been a huge benefit for safety. Today, we as pilots find ourselves in a unique position in that perhaps 30 years ago, 40 years ago, technology was uh, built around the pilot, and that's good. Today, though, we've had such advancements in technology that today the technology exists to support the pilot. The key is the pilot must learn to use that technology. So today, the pilot should really spend more time managing the flight, more time uh, as the captain of the helicopter, less time as pilot physically flying the machine. And in this way, we will reduce accidents and improve safety. Limitations for pilots are difficult to understand and evaluate. As we discussed before, the helicopter has a first limit indicator. We can see the limitations of the machine quite well. It's much more difficult to understand and to see the limitations of the human, the pilot. So we have to understand human behavior, understand cognition, 
and the man-machine interface much better because we as humans are becoming um, perhaps the weakest link in the cockpit. Sometimes we're the strongest link, but oftentimes our behavior will allow us to make errors which can lead to accidents. So we have to step back as pilots, set our ego aside, and allow the technology to do what it's designed to do, which is to provide a safe flight path. Improvement for the man-machine interface really starts with engineering, right? Engineers have to understand human behavior quite well. We have to understand how humans will interact with the machine. And we have to allow for slight variances in each individual person. But really, humans, our differences are very small, really. Our similarities are much greater. So the, the man-machine interface is critical. And what is critical for us as a manufacturer is to understand well human behavior so we can design the systems which will coalesce with that behavior, not conflict with that behavior.